everybody. So today is the day. It's the last episode in season one of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. It's been a really fun show overall this season. I've actually really enjoyed talking about it episodically instead of binging it all in one session. It's actually really nice to get your theories out and predictions of what's coming up. But of course, last week's episode was actually a little bit early. It's been nine days since the last episode because it came out on Wednesday because The Rise of Skywalker actually came out last weekend on Friday. If you didn't know, obviously, as a Star Wars fan, it came out. But let me know in the comments section down below, by the way, what did you think of The Rise of Skywalker? Did you like it? Did you not like it? We'll get all your thoughts on that in the comments below. Also, as we talk about this episode. But yeah, I mean, the way that that cliffhanger last week, I mean... Quill and was racing to the ship with Baby Yoda. He gets unexpectedly murdered. They steal Baby Yoda. And while all that's going down, Moff Gideon and the Stormtroopers are pinning Mando and everybody inside the building. So it looked to be a very intense showdown in the season finale. But let's get right into my thoughts about this last episode of The Mandalorian Season 1. Obviously, it is going to be spoiler-filled, so if you have not watched the episode, be warned. I think it's safe to say after this season finale, we need to give Taika Waititi more material in the Star Wars universe to direct because this was a really great episode in my opinion. It had a lot of really great story development for the series. I mean, the first of all, it starts out with the, obviously Baby Yoda was taken and these stormtroopers, they're like beating him while he's in the sack and that really upsets me, but... They have some really interesting banter, like funny banter you'd see in a Tega Watiti film. And you can definitely tell it's his kind of style of humor. But it's, it's subtle things like that he does a really good job with. I also just like Tega Watiti as IG-11. IG-11 gets a big step up in this episode. And, you know, now that he's a good droid now, he's a nurse droid instead of a, you know, bounty hunter. And he saves the day, steals back Baby Yoda, and he has this epic freaking battle where he's flying in on a speeder with while holding baby yoda killing stormtroopers everywhere but later on in the episode he also has a really heroic and honorable sacrifice and he finally gets to self-destruct so i was actually kind of surprised they went through with the whole self-destruct thing but it was a more noble death this time and it wasn't like it was in the very first episode when he was fighting with mando i've been a big fan of the action set pieces pretty much throughout the entire season but this episode definitely has some of the best ones obviously the big battle with mando and everybody versus Moff Gideon and the Stormtroopers, the Death Troopers. They pull out one of the Flame Troopers. By the way, Baby Yoda, he freaking just uses his force powers again and just as, you know, epic as all can be. The Flame Trooper comes in, you think they're about to get all flamed up in the building. Baby Yoda uses his force powers and just flicks them all, all the flames all the way back to the same Flame Trooper and saves the day. And of course, he passes out because he's using too much of his force abilities and he's young. You know, 50 years old is young in that species. Which, by the way, it seems like they're going to cater towards the, uh, for second season. They're gonna kind of explore the galaxy and we're gonna find out his race. We're gonna go to his planet with his race. So, I don't know how everyone feels about that. We're gonna actually find out more of the origin of Yoda's race. Well, obviously, it's Yoda and Waddle and the child. You know, whatever their, their race is gonna be, end up being called. We'll probably figure it out in the next season, which is kind of fascinating because we've been around Star Wars for all these years and we've never really known what race Yoda and all of them are. But Baby Yoda is adorable as always in this episode. He definitely gets some really cute moments as well as some badass moments as well. When the Mandalorian and Kara and all them all visit the armorer, they do basically just officially just say like, hey, you know, because of the laws and all that, he's Baby Yoda is basically your kid. Like, you're his father, so you have to take care of him. So they definitely are just father and son adventures now. So I'm just going to... Going in the future, they're just father-son adventures at this point, which I'm a fan of because I've always considered them kind of like the father-son dynamic ever since he took him. And like many people assume was going to happen eventually, Mandalorian does finally get his jetpack in this episode and he puts it to good use because he fights Moff Gideon in a TIE fighter. He jetpacks up to him and clings onto his ship, makes him crash. By the way, Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gr Gideon, he is amazing. I love Giancarlo Esposito in pretty much anything he's in. Obviously, Gus Fring is like one of the best villains on TV of all time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him be and more Star Wars universe stuff just because he's such a cool character in the very brief time we've gotten for him in these last couple episodes. Of course, you you know, you think that maybe he, because he crashes, maybe he dies, and I'm glad that he didn't actually die, because that would have been really disappointing because he was such a cool character. But the added bonus to all of that, when the Jawas are trying to strip his ship for parts, he breaks out of the TIE fighter with a freaking Darksaber. That is so badass. <laughs> 
And it, like it's him on top of the TIE fighter with the dark saber, and that is the final shot of the episode, which is like badass. Like, give me more of that in season two, please. I want to see more of Moff Gideon with a dark saber going after the Mandalorian and the child. Other things throughout the episode that also are really cool was we do finally get to see Pedro Pascal's glorious face underneath the mask just this one time for a very brief scene or two because IG-11 has to take off his helmet to heal him and it's one of those things obviously they we've seen that the Mandalorian doesn't like droids and they do explain why because super battle droids came and killed his parents but then that's why he became a Mandalorian because the Mandalorian saved him and adopted him and he adopted the Creed and all that. It was such a brief little scene though of Pedro Pascal unmasked. I don't think we're going to get too many more of those going forward but it was a nice little touch to actually throw in a scene of Pedro Pascal actually in the suit because he's pretty much in the helmet 99% of the time. Yeah, I certainly had a blast with this season finale. I am sad that it is the final episode of season one. I am looking forward to season two because now we can speculate what do you think is going to happen in season two? Because like I said earlier, we get those little hints. It looks like it's going to be more of the Mandalorian and the child going and trying to find that species. Like, the go find their planet in the galaxy will get more of the explanation of what the race Yoda, Waddle, and the child are. So that could, that could be fun as a Star Wars fan, seeing, like the origin of Yoda and all that stuff. So that could be really fun. Obviously, Giancarlo Esposito will be back because he didn't die, which I'm so glad that he didn't die because, I mean, that was such a great exit to the episode, just him with that dark saber. Like, those dark sabers are so cool. And seeing it in live action was just awesome. Let me know in the comments section down below, though, your theories on what's going to happen in Season 2. And also, what do you think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you have your favorite moments like I listed? Or you have, every, you know, different moments as well? Either way, let's make sure we get a discussion in the comments because there's so many things to talk about. You know, like I talk about all things movies and TV shows here. But as always, thank you so much for checking out my videos. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep it up. Movie reviews, chill reactions, unboxings, and more. I did post my worst top 10 worst movies of 2019 the other day. I'm still working on my top 10 best movies of 2019. It should be out in the next day or two. But thank you much as always for checking out my videos. Until the next time, I'll see you guys later.